Hi everybody, Craig Lamparder, KM6LYW, here again at the VHF desk, and we're going to talk a little bit more about packet radio. Um, as you can see, there's, there's more than one digipeter out there. There's the terrestrial digipeter, and uh, you might not know there's digipeters in space. Um, we're going to see if we can operate one or more of them. Um, today we've got the International Space Station. Uh, it's heading over California right now, as you can see on ISS Tracker. We're going to tune to its APRS frequency and see if we can bounce some packets off it. Who knows, maybe we'll get a QSO or something. Um, so when you're, we're, we're set up with our packet radio, or what I call DigiPi, uh, that's this guy over here. Another video has an instructions on how to build him. But you can use like a mobile link TNC or something too. Um, that'll work just fine. And we're, we're talking, talking to him over Bluetooth and we're using APRS Droid. Uh, one thing we want to do if we're talking to satellites is to get off the traditional APRS frequency and get on to 145.825. That's a real common frequency uh, specifically used for the International Space Station. So if I forgot the timing right, it's directly overhead, and usually the trailing edge of the pass is typically the best. So um, this is going to be live, so we'll, we'll, we're just going to have to see how this goes. Uh, so the digipeter is on and running. We're going to use APRS Droid to start talking to it. In fact, uh, let's go back to uh, the web browser. We're going to go over to the DigiPi. That's that little device on the left. And I'm just going to refresh it to make sure it's in uh, TNC mode. So you can see down in the bottom, it's a, a 1200 baud VHF TNC. And then I'm going to go over to APRS Droid and clear the log to get rid of all this extra stuff. Um, I'm already tracking. Um, let's see, I'm just using a regular omnidirectional antenna on the roof, um, so I do have high power on. You know, normally you would want to hit this with the Yagi and low power, maybe even an HT. Um, but I am tracking. Um, as you can see in the bottom there, it says stop tracking. So I'm going to go into uh, preferences, and this is the most important part. Go into preferences and a APRS DigiPath. Uh, normally this would be wide 1-1 for terrestrial APRS, um, but if you're going to be talking to satellites, most of them will digipeat anything responding or with the ARISS in its routing path. So go ahead and put uh, ARISS in there. And don't forget to change it back when you go back to terrestrial APRS too. Let's get out of preferences here. And I'm waiting for a signal from the ISS. You know, I'm going to turn the volume up, and as soon as I hear one, I'll, I'll probably start sending beacons. In fact, I'll send a position right now. And, yep, I just got digipeated. Um, so I guess it was that easy. I thought we were going to have to wait a lot longer. So you can see my packet went up. Um, it was a position report. And then it was, uh, should have been brought back down, um, the, the top line there. We see where it says RS0 ISS. That's the Russian call sign for the International Space Station. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna send a I don't know an email or something while the space station's up there. Um, I'll I'll send something to my wife here again. Um, I don't know. Let's see if I can uh, clear messages. So I'm gonna send something to my virtual radio uh, dash J L. That's her alias. Hey, email via the I S S exclamation points, and I'm gonna say okay. It's transmitting, and we wait for the packet to come back. It might not have heard me that time. It was too easy sending the beacon. So anyways, it'll send. This is one of seven tries on the uh, sending my wife an email through my virtual radio that's in the cloud called KM6LYW-9. Um, so that'll resend in another minute. In fact, what you can do for expediency, you can say restart transmission. And it just transmitted the packet, but we didn't get digipeated that time. Yeah, the first one was too easy. Um, maybe we can see where the, the where the ISS is. If we go over here, there's a site called ISS Tracker. And we can see it's just north of me in California here, so it's still in a good spot. Um, if we go to raw packets on APRS.fi, you can see that we've been digipeated. And you'll see the very last line there um, is my packet that we just sent up. And you'll see it's been digipeted by RS0 ISS on the routing table there. Additionally, for additional street cred, you can go to ARISS.net. And this is, lists all the positions and people who have contacted the International Space Station. 
Of course, you'll see yours truly over there on the left in the, by Sacramento. Uh, we were just digipeded. And if you go down here, we should see my call sign if it's updated recently. Let me just uh, reload this page. You'll see my call sign uh, right here. Um, KM6LYW. So I contacted the space station two minutes and 25 seconds ago. So this is a way you to really know that you got through. Um, in fact, if we look down at the raw packets, I actually digipeded my own packet. Um, you can see that the, after the QAO, you see my own call sign. That's the call sign of the DigiPi you, you just saw. All right, let's go back to APRS Digi and see if our packet was digipeded. I'm going to go out of the message dialog here. And let's see, I've sent it twice. We've got some other people online now, too. Um, it doesn't look like I have been digipeded yet. All the green ones are my transmissions, and all the blue ones are packets that we've received. Um, so I could actually send a message to uh, K7MT. But before I do, I want to want to note that we did receive the beacon from the International Space Station. So, you know, we're not just making this up. It's <laughs> This is from the RS-0 ISS station itself uh, you can see, uh, see uh, I don't know fourth or fifth line from the bottom there I don't know we, we can also send a message to this guy who's calling CQ um, we'll send him a message hey got you on ISS and this is the K7MT-6 and we just sent that packet yeah, I didn't hear it get digipeded, so if we didn't hear it, I doubt anyone else heard it either. Um, so this might not be a good QSO example, but at least we got our beacon through. Um, that was fun. So that, that'll keep sending. And you know, I'm going to just do a restart so it sends again. Usually it's about a minute between packets, and to be honest, the ISS passes overhead in about 9 or 10 minutes. Uh, so that's give you an idea how that works. So let's go back and look at the log here. Um, again, green is stuff I've transmitted. And blue is stuff that we've received. So it looks like only one other guy is on the ISS Digipeter today. And then we've also got the International Space Station itself uh, right there um, that sent its own beacon. In fact, that's kind of a cool one to get. Um, you know, as you can probably hear in the background, I do have my uh, my HT back here listening. Uh, I was going to see if I got an ISS packet on it. It's on a very inferior antenna. Um, anyways, it's just kind of monitoring the packet activity. So that is how you work the International Space Station. Um, if you do get packets through and you do go to APRS.FI and there is a line down here like this uh, that specifically has RS0 ISS in it, uh, that means you did successfully operate the International Space Station. The little asterisk means uh, it was sent through that router if you're familiar with AX.25. Um, so that was it. We got a, a position packet up and down from the International Space Station. We actually routed our own packet. Normally it comes down over some other station in the United States, depending on the, the flight path. Um, and we didn't get any messages out, it looks like. Uh, otherwise, we would see those here as well. So they didn't come back to Earth, necessarily. Uh, at least we didn't hear it and no one else did. Um, and we know we made it on ARISS, uh, our... Uh, our call sign is there. Uh, we saw our raw packets. And the ISS, according to isstracker.com, is now setting to the northeast, so it's over. And about every 90 minutes, it'll, it'll fly by, right? So the next track you can see there, it'll be flying over 90 minutes. It won't be in a bit, as good a position. It'll be a little bit north of us. I'm here in California. But that's how that works. And make sure you, after you do this, you set all of your radios back to the proper um, AP, terrestrial APRS uh, uh, gating. So uh, I would go back to APRS droid, for example. I always forget to do this. So I'm going to do it here. I'm going to preferences and change it back from uh, the digipath from ARISS back to uh, the terrestrial gate wide one dash one. And so now this will work on regular APRS again. So that was it. We operated the International Space Station, and I am going to put the radio back on terrestrial APRS. Let's just start making a lot of noise now. 
Now they said that. And here come the packets in. These are from ground people. But you know, once you've operated space, it's kind—it's of, not as interesting, I guess. Um, the other thing is, if you do contact the space station, they will send a QSL card. I don't have the the link on me, uh, but they will take their time and send out this QSL card uh, that says when you operated the International Space Station, uh, Russian call sign RS zero I S S, and. Uh, We'll go back to here, make sure terrestrial APRS is working. Yep, there come the packets. Um, actually, I'm still sending uh, <laughs> my messages. What I should probably do is go back and abort those because you will never get an acknowledgement back. Um, it's not a tra it's not traditionally connected to APRIS, APRS information service, so you won't always uh, get an acknowledgement. In fact, I never have. And I'm going to abort the transmission going to... Uh, this guy, uh, abort transmission, and they'll be saved for later too. And honestly, every pass, you'll probably see the same people on the ISS, and you'll get a you'll get a QSO from time to time. Um, I did get a message back and forth uh, from this guy on the last path. Um, that, that's Jim. In fact, he sent me an email and said, "Hey, did you get my reply on the ISS?" And unfortunately, I hadn't. So we 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 gotten packets back and forth, but we didn't get that third uh, transmission path. Uh, so I guess you it's not officially a QSO. Okay, so that's how you operate the International Space Station using an APRS digipeter. Um, either this digipi that we built the other day, or you could use a mobile link D, or you could just use your uh, your uh, your radio here and just uh, do messaging. Um, just it's just a lot more easy to type on your Android device. Um, you know, than it is on your radio, but you can, you could do this with an FTM 400. You don't need a DigiPi or anything like that. You could use an FTM one, two, or three. Those are the ASU handhelds. The, um, the Kenwoods D72, D74 work just fine. Um, when you're out in the field, it's, you know, you can bounce packets off the space station. That'll work anywhere in the world. So long as you know where the space station is in space time. Um, I've actually done this from the lake and sent the wife this instant message, uh, from up in the Sierra Nevada high country, uh, just with the HT and a 19-inch whip, I was able to send her an SMS message uh, using the exact same technique that we went over here. Anyways, this is KM6LYW Craig in cool California operating packet today. KM6LYW73.